Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement systems. This time we're going to start about what we want from a measurement system. Okay? Last time we talked categories, this time we really go into yeah, how to cat not, not categorize, how to, to fix things with the, with the measurement system. Okay? This time is specifically we are talking about the static behavior of a measurement system what a static behavior is and what is static about it and how to describe it, we will we'll be covered in this video. Okay, so we're talking about the static behavior. Static behavior of a measurement system. Well, we talked about how a measurement system looks like how it is built yeah this was one of the first videos we said okay we have somewhere we have a sensor yeah i will draw here now a typical symbol for a sensor the wheatstone bridge yeah this is the sensor all right then we said we need an amplifier somehow yeah? here's the amplifier and then we have somewhere and a displayed value. Right? Here we have some display. I so said the signal is going to here. Maybe there is power supply from the sensor. The sensor is giving a reasonable gain system to the display device. And actually what we have is here a physical quantity which is influencing the sensor and here we have a reading, okay? Here we have a reading. So this is the physical quantity. And here we have the reading, the measurement. the displayed value. Okay. Here, this is the input. Yeah? So this I can say, this is the input in my measurement system and this is my output, XO, what I get out of a measurement system. So actually, if we combine those, those things, we could say there is one block representing the measurement system yeah. where we do have an input and we do get out an output. <laughs> so these are reasonable names for input and output. Here is XO and here is XI. Yeah. This is a little bit more abstract now, but it should simply show those parts. All right. And what the static behavior now is, is the dependencies of the output on the input. Yeah. But in a way that these dependencies, they are, uh, you know, once we apply here some physical quantity, after a while, statically apply, it not changing, yeah, then the output will reach a certain value. Okay, the output will reach a certain value, and that's it. Yeah? And this description, how those two things uh, fit together, yeah? how those two things are influencing each other, this is the static behavior. If the input is not changing or not changing too fast, yeah? this would then be the dynamic behavior. Dynamic behavior we're going to talk about next thing. Yeah? So we are looking for a relation between those two things. Yeah? So here we have somewhere the input value, xi. Yeah? Here we have somewhere the output value, XO, yeah? and 
how those two things are interconnected can be described by some line. Yeah? Some line, simply. Yeah? So we have somewhere, we have a maximum output value. Somewhere we have a corresponding maximum input value. Okay. So this is the measurement range. Yeah. This is xi max, the maximum thing I can measure with my measurement device. And this is my maximum thing I can display. Obviously, those two things, it would not be a bad idea if those two things fit together. Yeah. And how those two things map to each other can be described by a curve. So maybe curve like this. Then I know if I have this input value, I will read this reading. Okay. So here's my xi. 1, which will result in my x01. Okay. And so, for every xi, exactly one xo is mapped, yeah? and for every xo, exactly one xi is also <laughs> mapped. This is the prerequisite. Yeah? This is absolutely necessary that this curve yeah, needs to show by unique. Yeah? So every value here must have exactly one value here. Every value here must have exactly one value here. So this must increase all the time, yeah? the curve. Why? What would be an ideal curve? Well, ideal curve would be would be something like this. Linear, yeah. Often we don't have it. Yeah? Often we don't have it because our sensors are not linear. They are reacting in a non-linear manner on our physical quantity, and then we do have things like like that. Yeah? that we have somewhere maximum. I will draw this in, in orange color because this is still working, but not that ideal. Yeah, maybe mm, banana. <laughs> and which is absolutely not working would be something like this. Yeah. Let's draw it in red color to indicate. So if we do not have a bionique dependency, yeah, this is this is not not working. Okay. This is still okay. Yeah. We simply use this, this, this curve, this diagram, to show how those two things are mapped to each other. That that's, describes the static behavior. All right? If we now think about what will happen if this is changing to another value, to here, then the output is changing. So if we have here a certain change of the input, this will result into a certain change of the output. Okay? I can now even think if these changes are very tiny, very, very tiny, then I will end up in in reaching the tangent uh, in this point, uh, so this is the tangent in this point. This would describe how much change there is yeah, if those changes are really tiny. Okay, and you can see here we have a delta xi, and here 
I will try to make the same delta xi. Yeah. And here the output is changing much more. So this is the same delta xi and here we have a delta xo to another delta xo. The, the input is changing the same amount and the output is changing a different amount. This is because this is a non-linear curve. In a linear curve, this is this is why I said it's ideal. Okay, so how to describe those things? There is the so-called sensitivity. Okay, the sensitivity or Empfindlichkeit in Dutch. In German, of course, <laughs> the sensitivity. I will write now E because this is how it is written in the script as well. Empfindlichkeit, because it's Empfindlichkeit in, in, in German. Yeah? Sensitivity. This is the change of the output divided by the change of the input. Yeah? So how much output change is caused by an input change? This is actually, it's the steepness of, of this curve at exactly this point. This is the sensitivity. All right. And if we, if we would write it with rather small letters, then we make it dxo to dxi. Yeah. So the derivation is called, this is derivation called. You will. For sure, hear about this in your math lesson. Yeah? This means nothing more that this delta here is that tiny that it's no longer observable, but still there. Yeah? Sensitivity. So, what do we want from a measurement system? Ideal sensitivity from a measurement system would be if the sensitivity is is constant over the whole time, yeah? and that's it. Yeah. How big a sensitivity shall be? This you cannot tell, this ideal. Of course, you would say a small change would already be a big change in, 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 in displayed value. Would, why isn't that good? Yeah. I imagine the input, maybe there's a little bit noise there. Yeah? It's static, but it's a little bit, a little bit noise. And if you have too much sensitivity, then this display will change and you cannot read anything. Yeah? So sensitivity there is a good area, but too high and too low is bad. Yeah? So uh, usually we have somewhere, we have to have somewhere a linearization of those things. Yeah? So we have to have somewhere, we need to map somehow the displayed value to the input. Yeah? And if we have curves like this, yeah? so not linear, linear it's no issue. Yeah? If I have double the, the display, I have double the measurement. If I have curves like this, I need to linearize those. Yeah? I need somehow a technique how to deal with curves. Yeah? I will try to show this now here. So here we have xi, write this xi here also that we know this is the same, same thing. And here we have xo, then again have a maximum values. And I will draw now one, I don't know, one curve. Looking like this. All right. How to linearize these things? Yeah. A, a simple approach would be to, to do not care about the actual line yeah? and replace it simply by using instead 
this. Huh? This is the replacement. So I say, if I read this, if I read this value, it is not dead, it is dead. Yeah? So I make, I make an error. Yeah? If I replace the correct diagram with a linearized diagram, then I'm, I make an error. And in this case, you see the error is, is quite big. All right? So I could also come to the idea, well, I make one line which is somewhere in the middle. Huh? Like that. Then this is replacement one, huh? replacement two. Then those two things, that the error is not that severe anymore. However, it's positive or negative. All right? So, it would be a possibility. Yeah? If, we, if accuracy is then enough, you can do this. Yeah? Simply by replacing a line with a curve with a line. Okay? With a straight. If it's not that sufficient, yeah, then you have to to check uh, somehow areas. Okay, then I'll make this in blue color now. Then you have one area, and you're replacing there this with this line. Then you have a second area where you're replacing this with this line. Then you have the third area where you're replacing it with this line. Yeah, so you are replacing the curve with lines in a certain area only, yeah, in a sub in a sub area of the whole measurement range. Yeah? Then the errors are not that severe. This is actually done. Yeah? This is actually done. I give you one example. The temperature measurement of your computers. Yeah? You can read temperatures of your core, yeah, of the of the memory, or there are a lot of temperature measurements inside. These temperature measurements are directly inside the chip. Okay, it's nice because they really measure the temperature of the silicium, yeah, of the of the semiconductor chip. However, those semiconductor temperature sensors are very nonlinear. Yeah, they are not. They are very nonlinear. So, at a certain area, we have a lot of change. They are changing actually the resistance, a lot of change of the resistance. And in this other area, we have quite low change of the resistance. And there is usually solved with a so-called lookup table. There is written, okay, if we have this reading, this display. And we've had this reading, this display. If we have this reading, this display. So there's a table inside where you just need to find the correct position and then read out the temperature value, okay? So you have some some resistance and get out the temperature value, yeah? And then you are actually you are then replacing this curve with a lot of small pop, 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 table entries, and in between it's even linearly uh, interpolated. Uh, if you have two points, then in between we have a linear. It's exactly this. Uh? Your computer is doing that. Static behavior. This, the sensitivity, this is, this is the value of the static behavior, let's say, and this is how we can deal with uh, curves that are not that linear. Yeah? And we said linear curves are ideal. So let's assume we have linear curves in worst case, we have linearized them. Yeah? Next video, we're going to talk about what type of linear curves there are. You see, there are three types of linear curves. Live zero, suppressed zero, zero. What this is about, we will hear next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.